Hi. All right, who are you? Speak up. I'm doing great. Over here, we have a lot of clocks that use ancient display technology, such as Nixie tubes or cathode ray tubes. So come and take a look. Okay. <laughs> So this right here uses a Panaplex display, so it's neon filled, but it has seven segments, just like the LED display that you see on the common alarm clock. And this is the circuit board. And you, did you build this circuit board yourself? This is my own design. How does it work? Well, there's a high voltage power supply that takes the uh, voltage coming in and it steps it up to 180 volts to run each of these displays. Over here there's a microprocessor that generates the multiplex signal to control each one of these display panels. So is there a drive transistor there for each? A row of uh, driver transistors here for each set of segments, and then one for each of the digits. Okay. What type of microcontroller? Uh, so this is a PIC. Okay. What are the, oh, okay, I see the extra neon bulbs are for the, the dots. For the colon, right. Yeah, yeah. And then there's one here for the AM and PM indicator as well. Nice. Next. Next. <laughs> well, we can go to this one right here, which uh, uses IEE displays. And these are rear projected displays. Oh, so is there lenses behind these? Right, so there's lenses behind here. I'm not sure if you, could, if you could see this, but if I hold this up to the light, then you might be able to see numbers shining through it. I'm not sure if you can see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, we can see that. So there's lenses in there, and behind each lens is a little mask that has a number printed on it. And so what happens is we take this little array of light bulbs and uh, that fits inside here like this. And then those project inside this screen right here. And there's a little screen here on the front that the number will show up on. Are and each so of those lenses kind of angled so that the... Right, so the lenses are angled appropriately and with the right focus point. So they focus all on the screen in the same place. That's neat. So that's what you can see there. And then over here, we have a uh, cathode ray tube that's being used as a clock. And so these are all scanned using a vector algorithm. So it's not a raster scan like you would see with a typical monitor. It actually scans out each number just like you would write the number with a pen. Except instead of a pen, it's using an electron beam to write on the phosphor screen. All right, so the, uh, the guns are down here, right? Uh-huh. And then they're accelerated. That's and it right. looks like you have electrostatic deflection on this. That's right. So it has electrostatic deflection plates, which uh, move the electron beam to point to different areas of the screen, which is right up here in the front. Cool. What else do you have? Well, I have a Nixie 2 wall clock. <laughs> Let's have a look at that one. Man, you have so many clocks. A lot of clocks. Let me tell you, at home last night it was disconcerting because I looked around and I couldn't tell what time it was. It was terrible. Because they're so, all here? That's right, they're all here. And so these are Nixie tubes. They're filled with neon gas and they have 10 electrodes, one for each digit. And so I apply 180 volts to a particular electrode and that causes it to light up. And that's the neon gas that you're seeing. It's the same principle as one of those little tiny neon bulbs. And Looks then here like a the similar inside, circuit as the very other. Very similar circuit. So there's the same power supply circuit, and then there's a different uh, microcontroller circuit, and uh, different drive circuitry. But other than that, it's very, very similar. What type of a microcontroller? Uh, this one uses a Max Q2000, which is a 16-bit, uh, uh, sort of similar to an 8051 architecture. What are these chains and? Well, the chains are for setting the various functions. I can, uh, by pulling this chain, for example, I can get the temperature. And so if you look up here, you can see that uh, the clock thinks it's 79 degrees, but that's really the temperature inside this plastic case. <laughs> and then these other right here, I can uh, run the clock, I can set the time, and I can pull the hour and minute chains to change the particular uh, parameter there. And it's also got an alarm function as well, so I can turn the alarm on or I can turn the alarm off. I and see a the bell alarm here. Is that little bell right there? And so that's the alarm function, but it also strikes the hour, except after 9 p.m. and uh, it won't strike the hour before 10 a.m. Also, that, I mean, that I bell looks familiar sleep. to me. Is that a telephone bell? This is one half of a telephone bell. So a telephone has two bells, each with a different tone, and that makes the distinctive ring signal that uh, sounds so familiar to all of us. And this is one half of that. Now the other half of that telephone bell is on 
this particular device, which is a kitchen timer. And so what I can do here is uh, push a button to wake it up, and then by pushing these buttons here, I can increment the time remaining or decrement the time remaining. And, what type uh, of tube is that? So this is called the Decatron tube, and it's filled with both neon and argon. And so that gas will ionize to indicate one of those positions in the tube. Now originally they used these tubes before they had invented uh, electronic calculators and they used them for counting. So for example, you could create a counter by putting a row of tubes like these together and the device would count around until it hit a limit. That would trigger an index signal which would send a single pulse to the next stage. So you could get a decimal counter. So you have a couple leads that go in and they, they're hooked to multiple pins around the diameter right, of exactly. that. And then you can drag the neon back and forth. That's too. right. So you can move the neon forward, so you can move the neon backwards with uh, just a simple step input. And then in the back here, when the time runs out, uh, this little brass bell will ring and let you know that your eggs are done cooking. Perfect timing. Nice. <laughs> Another Nixie clock here. Oh, right. an LED one down. Look at that. So this is an LED that uh, you might see in uh, an old calculator. Oh, well, the camera is picking up the scan of that. Yeah, That's the scan awesome. on it is very slow because the device is running at 32 gigahertz. So it keeps track of the time and it has to multiplex the LEDs. But it doesn't leave a whole lot of processor cycles to do that. So what do we have going on here for the electronics? Well, let's see. We've got a PIC microcontroller with a little voltage regulator. I like your prototyping here. That it's drilled through a piece of Lexan and then And then wired together wires. with magnet wire, yeah. So that was just a fun little experiment just to see what it would look like. And then, one final very interesting little project is uh, this guy right here, which I'm wearing. And this is a Nixie tube, but I'm wearing it like a pendant. And that's because it's got a high voltage power supply that takes a 3 volt coin cell and it steps the voltage up to 150 volts wow. to run the uh, the neon in the Nixie tube. How are you doing it? Well, can you it's give got that a circuit secret away? here. I can give that secret away. This is a simple Moyer oscillator circuit. So it's two transistors that are in a resonant configuration with a toroidally wound uh, transformer. And so it generates uh, sort of a modified sine wave. The output of that is uh, a little bit higher voltage, AC, and I run that through a multiplier circuit right here to uh, multiply that up to 150 volts. So all of that just from a simple 3 volt point cell. Nice. Alright, how can people find out more about your projects and who are you? You didn't say that at the beginning. Okay, well my name is Eric Schlepper and you can find my website at uh, www.tubetime.us. Thank you. You're welcome.